Hello everyone, my name is Brian Gomez and I am an intern here at Linux Security and welcome to today's video. Today we will be going over the WPD Web Vulnerability Scanner. So before we get into that, uh, why don't we kind of go over what a Web Vulnerability Scanner is. Well, a website vulnerability is a flaw or vulnerability in the code of a website or web application that can allow a black hat hacker or a cyber criminal to gain control of the site and possibly even the web hosting server. Understanding and preventing these web vulnerabilities is especially important for any business or just normal daily user or just anybody that plans to maintain a website or web application. A web vulnerability scanner is designed to look for these security flaws in a website or web application. It searches for flaws in web services and web servers. And because cyber criminal criminals are quick to exploit these vulnerabilities, you should be implementing a regular use of a web scanner as well. Routine web scanning and routine web vulnerability testing will allow you to patch security flaws before cyber attackers can manipulate them. And in today's video, we will be going over Wapiti. So, Wapiti gives you the ability to audit the security of your web apps. It performs black box scans, which essentially means it doesn't examine the uh, web application source code, but instead it scans the deployed web apps web pages for scripts and forms into which it can inject data. Uh, Wapiti does have a lot of functionality. It scans against SQL injections, cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, CRLF injections, uh, XXE injections. It also searches for bypass of weak HC access configurations, folder and file enumeration, server-side request forgery, uh, basic CSP evaluator, brute force log forms, and a bunch of other things. So with that being said, let's get right into the installation. Uh, right here on my screen, as you can see, I have an instance of Kali Linux running. So before anything, let's just make sure everything is updated. So let's run the command apt get update. And you can see here, mine was pretty quick, as I already did it before. <laughs> OK. And now, with that being updated, we can run the command apt get install wapiti. And before I hit enter, as you can see here, I am, I do have root privileges. So if you are running it on any account that does not have root privileges, you might want to run the command sudo apt get install wapiti. Um, but for this example, since I am root, I will be running the command apt get install wapiti. And let's hit enter here. And we can see here, Wapiti is already to the newest version. And Wapiti is, has been manually installed. So I guess I had it downloaded already. OK, so if we take a look here, I already have Wapiti installed. So let's hit pd-h. And here, we kind of get a help menu kind of helping us out, see what we can pass in as an argument. Uh, for this example, I will be testing it against Google. So let's do that right now. So let's do pd-u and let's run it against Google. So you can see here, that was fairly quick. Um, and at the bottom here, we can see a report has been generated in the file root wapiti generator report. And it says open root, well, open path to file with the browser to see this report. So that is exactly what I am going to do. OK, after opening the file, we can see here PD vulnerability report target http google.com so 
you know, you know Google, Google being Google, Google we, wouldn't we wouldn't expect them to have that many vulnerabilities, or we wouldn't expect them to have any vulnerabilities at all. But as, as we, we can see here, we do have quite a few. We have content, content security policy configuration. configuration. We, we have, have HTTP secure headers, headers. And we, we have, have HTTP only flag cookie. cookie. So these are actually hyperlinks, which will take you to the specific section in the document. So if I click on CSP, it'll take me directly to it. If I click on HTTP secure headers, it'll take me directly to it, so on and so forth. So here we see content security policy configuration. Um, and it kind of tells us what CSP is, what it's used for. So content security policy is an added layer of security that helps to detect and mitigate certain types of attacks, including cross-site scripting and data injection attacks. And here we can see vulnerability found in, I'm going to assume this is a root folder, and it says CSP is not set. And they even provide us with a solution. Uh, configuring, configuring content, content security, security policy involves adding the content, content security policy HTTP header to a web page and giving it values to control what resources the user agent is allowed to load for that page. And, and here we can see that they give us a list of references. So if you click on these references, uh, let's click on the OWASP one. It takes us to a website or it takes us to a reference that is meant to help us so here it kind of talks about uh this link will talk about it's a content security policy cheat sheet so it's kind of giving us um tips or advice on how we can strengthen our cfp and uh it's kind of just generic advice you would kind of have to tweak it to your specific use case or case use um but this, this is why I really enjoy using Wapiti because even if you have, have a problem and you kind of don't know it, they give you a reference to help you understand and kind of give you some guidance to where to go from there. Um, here we can see HTTP secure headers. Uh, HTTP security headers tell the browser how to behave when handling the website's content. So, so here we can see X XSS protection isn't set and X content type options isn't set. Also, in the, in the same, same folder, folder as the previous error. And here, here they, they give us a couple references. It says uh, user recommendations for uh, hardening your HTTP security headers. So, so here they, they give us a list of references. And uh, I guess for this one, let's go on OWASP. Um, so here they kind of give us an introduction to HTTP headers, um, web browsing, and how HTTP works. And here they kind of give us a, uh, a snippet of the request and response headers. And here is browser security headers help. And it kind of helps us, um, kind of helps us configure it. It kind of helps us uh, how to how to secure our security headers. Uh, so if we go back, the last one here we have HTTP only flat cookie. And it says here, HTTP only is an additional flag included in a set cookie HTTP response header. Uh, using the HTTP only flag when generating a cookie helps mitigate, mitigate the risk of client-side script accessing the protected cookie. So uh, this is kind of like um, kind of like a session hijacking. So this would this would lead to an instance of session hijacking. So that would be um, that would be one issue of an HTTP only flag. So, so it says the solution would be while, cre while creating the cookie or while creating the, the session cookie, make sure to set the HTTP only flag to true. And if we click here, they kind of, if your code would be similar to this, um, you kind of just set the, set the HTTP response, HTTP only cookie header to true. Um, so, so that, that was, was the Wapiti report for Google. Um, when, when it comes, comes to Wapiti, you can actually you can run it in many various options. You can do dash v, and you can specify the number. So dash v is verbose mode. So the higher the number, the 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 more um, severe or the more rigorous the attack would be. Um, so, so if I were to do wpd-vu-v2, 
and then let's say I were to put in the same URL and I'm not going to hit enter because verbose mode actually does take quite a long time um, but if I were to run this it would run a scan against google.com in verbose mode and it will give me a much more detailed report so that's just a little tip and trick in, in case uh, you guys might need that um, and again just to bring up the, the help menu um, if I can find it sorry guys I'm a little blind here we go we see dash v um, or dash dash verbose and then after the parameter is a level so to and here they kind of tell you the verbosity level so zero is quiet one is normal and two is verbose being the most um, I guess uh, the strongest one the strongest type of scan um, so yeah and then if you guys need any help uh, you, uh, you could just, just run with pd-h and, and you can go through this list and it kind of gives you a description on the right hand side as well. Uh, so let me clear this up. So essentially that's what WPD is. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a web vulnerability scanner and you can test it against your websites and your web applications to see if you have any vulnerabilities within your uh, web applications. Um, we hope you really found this video useful and be sure, be sure to, to check, check out our WPD article. Uh, we kind of go a little bit more in depth and we test it against uh, various web applications and various websites as well in case you guys wanted to see those results. Uh, this was more of just a tutorial to kind of to get your feet wet and kind of to you know, uh, you know get you guys used to WPD and kind of how it works. Um, thank you for joining me today and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.